Hello, this is Ms. DB. In this lesson, we're going to discuss Chapter 11, Section 4 on Inscribed Angles. It's a pretty simple relationship between the angle and the intercepted arc, so this shouldn't be too bad. We're going to find the measure of an inscribed angle and also then use inscribed angles and their properties to solve problems. There's just a little bit of vocabulary today. Inscribed angle, intercepted arc, and subtend. Um, one example of inscribed angles is string art. I don't know if you've ever seen these, but this is where you would, if we, we were in a classroom, I'd hold one of these up. I have some great ones, but you have, usually it's a circle or sometimes a polygon, and you nail around the perimeter, you nail little nails. And then you take colored string and you wrap it around it. There's some pretty pictures in our book too. And the resulting pattern may include hundreds of inscribed angles. So an inscribed angle is when you have a circle and then you have the vertex is on the circle and the sides contain chords of the circle. So this is, I drew an example of an inscribed angle. So the inscribed angle is the actual angle. The intercepted arc is this piece of the circle, the, the piece of the circumference of the circle, that that angle is like holding on to. If you picture this as being hands, it's holding on to this is its intercepted arc from here to here. So the endpoints are the sides of the inscribed angle, and then of course the arc is all the pieces, all the points that are in between that. So we have inscribed angles and intercepted arc. A chord or arc subtends an angle if its endpoints lie on the sides of the angle. We don't use this as often as the first two vocabulary word, but it's called, it says a chord subtends an angle or an arc if its endpoints lie on the sides of the angles. So this arc subtends the angle because it's basically being held by it. Here's another example. This We name the angle by the vertex has to be in the middle. So D, E, F. D and F are the endpoints of the angle that end on the circle. So then we say that arc, remember this is arc, D, F is the intercepted arc. Its endpoints are the angle endpoints. And then you could say that arc DF subtends angle DEF. Now remember that you have to spell out the word arc when typing because there's no good way to make this little curvy thing. If you want to get fancy, you can use the equations editor in Word and you can find that arc key, but you can just write the word arc. It's short. It's not a problem. For angle, you can use the less than sign. So do make sure you're properly labeling. And you cannot call this you know, generally there'll be lots of different angles and points on the circle, so make sure you're naming your angle by the three points, the end points, and then the, uh, the vertex in the middle. There's a theorem for the inscribed angle, and this is, I told you, it would be a simple little theorem. It says that the measure of an inscribed angle is half the measure of an intercepted arc. So the measure of this let's say this is 30, is half of its intercepted arc. Not equal, like central angles and their arcs are equal. Inscribed angles will always be half. If this is 40, this is 80. Sometimes you know the inscribed angle and you have to find the arc. Sometimes you know the arc and you have to find the inscribed angle. 25 divided by 2 is like 12.5. So you could get fractions for this. So this would be the angle and this would be the arc. The arc measures are also in degrees. All right, so here's a couple different intercepted angles on the same circle. First, they want us to find the measure of angle. Remember, this is an angle. Make sure you know what you're looking for. P, R, U. That's this angle down here. We need to find that angle if its intercepted arc is 118. So all we have to do is take half of 118. The measure of arc PU is 118. 
and oops, I went too fast. And you get 59 for measure of angle, 59 degrees, PRU. Okay, the next one that they want us to find is the measure of arc. This is, means arc, SP. So they're looking for this arc from here to here. And they're giving us that the inscribed angle is 27. So this time you would put 27 for the angle, and it's equal to half of measure of SP. This is what we're looking for here. So to solve for measure of arc SP, it would be best to multiply both sides by 2. That cancels the fraction. And now we have 2 times 27, which is 54. So the measure of arc SP is 54 degrees. Okay, this time they want the measure of arc ADC. Remember, if they use three letters to name the arc, they're talking about the arc that is greater than 180 degrees, a major arc, AD, all the way over to, here it is, right here. That is a big arc, right? And does it have an inscribed angle? It does, right here. It's inscribed angle. It's right here. That arc goes with angle ABC. And angle ABC is 135 degrees. So we put 135 in for ABC, and then you multiply both sides by 2, and you get 270 degrees for the measure of that arc. Now we're using the same circle, but this time we want to know what is the measure of angle D. A, E, that's this angle right here. So we use the theorem that says that the intercepted arc is half of the measure of its inscribed, I said that the wrong way, the measure of the inscribed angle is half of the measure of the intercepted arc. So we put the 76 degrees in for measure of arc D, E, and half of that is 38. So this angle, inscribed angle, is 38 degrees. Now remember, in order for this theorem to work, it has to be an inscribed angle, and an inscribed angle has to have its vertex on the circle. In the next lessons, we're going to look at um, other kinds of angles that are not at the edge of the circle, not on the circle. Okay, there's a corollary to this theorem that says that if inscribed angles of a circle intercept the same arc or are subtended by the same quarter arc, then these angles are congruent. And this makes sense because, let's look at this. Let's say that angle ACB right here, let me get a different color. Angle ACB is right here. And it goes with arc AB, right? So if arc Arc, measure of arc AB, let's say it was uh, 80 degrees, then the angle must have been 40 degrees. Well, here's another arc, I mean another angle, ADB. It is also holding on to the same intercepted arc, so it also must be 40 degrees. And look at even angle AEB also is holding on to the same arc. It must also be 40 degrees. So all three of these inter inscribed angles have the same intercepted arc. Therefore, they're all congruent to each other. Here's a picture of string art. It's kind of blurry, but I, I enlarged it a little bit. So in this picture, we have many, 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 many angles, more than we want to even look at. But one of the angles here shows that measure of angle a, B, D, that's this angle they're talking about right here, and they want the mark, the mark, the measure of arc B, C, which is from here to here. So first they want us to find this angle. So this angle goes to the edge of the circle here and here. And you can see that it's intercepted arc is 86 degrees. So then you use the, the theorem which says that the inscribed angle is half of the measure of its intercepted arc. So it's half of 86 
So the measure of angle ABD is 43 degrees. Now for part two of the question, they want us to find the measure of arc BC. I'll get a different color for that one. So that's, again, I drew it first, but it's over here. And let's go back and see if we can find its angle. It's 60 degrees, the inscribed angle. So we would plug in the parts and we get 60 degrees is half of measure of arc BC. So multiply both sides by two and then we find that this arc is 120 degrees. All right, an inscribed angle subtends a semicircle if and only if the angle is right angle. This makes sense because let's say we have a right angle that's 90 degrees then the arc, the intercepted arc, would be 180 degrees. And 180 degrees is a semicircle. It also works the other way around. If we knew that this was 180 degrees, then you could take half of it to find that this angle must be 90 degrees. In this example, it just really is a shortcut. Look at, we can see that this is a diameter. If this is a diameter, that means that this arc is 180 degrees because that's half of 360, which means that this angle here must be a right angle, which means then that you can take 5a plus 20 is equal to 90, and you can solve that for a, which is what they were asking us to do in this problem. It's really just a special case of the fact that an inscribed angle is half of the measure of its intercepted arc. We can see again, if there's if they're showing that this goes through, this is a diameter because it goes through the center, then we know that its arc is 180, and then we know that this angle is 90 degrees. So again, once you know that that's 90 degrees, then you can substitute in your expression, 8z minus 6 for 90 and solve for z. Okay, one more theorem to review. This is if you have a quadrilateral, four-sided figure inscribed in a circle where every one of its vertices are on the circle, that's what it means, then the opposite angles are supplementary. So this angle plus this angle, angle D, plus measure of angle B is equal to 180 degrees. And the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle C would also be equal to 180 degrees. So if you know some expressions or if you know some of the angles, you can find the missing ones. Here's an example where we have a quadrilateral. All the vertices are on the circle. And we know that this angle K plus angle H will be equal to 180. But when I, if I start with that, I don't have any expression for H. So it's better to start with the ones that you know more information for. So for these two, they're opposite each other, so they're going to be equal to 180. Don't put them equal to each other. You'll get stuck. It won't work. So you're going to write that 6b plus 20 plus 3b plus 25 is equal to 180. And then to solve this with algebra, you combine your like terms. 6b plus 3b is 9b. Then 20 plus 25 is 45, and we continue solving this equation. So 9b is equal to 135 divided by 9. I'm not sure how many times that goes in there. 13 minus 9 is 4, 45, so 15. So b is equal to 15, and that's what they ask us to find. Now. Oh no, they ask us to find the angle measures. Once you find B, and this is the same as on your homework, you plug it back in to each one of the angles. This is 15. Now how are you going to find the last one? There's no expression for H. So for each of these, you can plug 15 in and find your answer. So 150, minus 69, and so on. But for this one, there's no answer. So what you do is once you find the other three, you can subtract 
from 360, because there's 360 degrees in a quadrilateral, or you can do this. So here's the other three, 70, 110, 81. And then for the last one, you can say, well, remember that these two are supplementary. They're equal to 180 if you add them together. And we found K, K was 81. So you can say measure of angle H plus measure of angle K is 180, and then replace K with 81 and subtract and get your answer. Or you could take all of them and subtract from 360, and that also will give you the same answer. So that would be how you'd find that last one that doesn't have any expression. So that's it. I don't think this worksheet is too bad or this lesson. So good luck and do well. And please ask me if you have any questions. Thank you very much and have a great day.